Hi, this is Bob working on a Heathkit receiver, an AR2 receiver. Heathkit made this receiver back in the 1950s. And this particular one here has got a couple of parts in it. I found dates 1954. So this is a 1954 AR2 receiver. They made the AR2 and then a little later they made the AR3. They are identical receivers basically. Uh, can't find much difference between this and the AR3. One thing I did notice about this receiver, however, is that the case that, that they have for it, you know, the case was an accessory that you had to buy. You bought the receiver and it came like this. Of course, I got it upside down here on the bench. But you bought the receiver like this and then you bought the case separately. But the one thing I noticed was the AR2 case is a very well made case out of plywood where the case for the AR3 is made out of particle board and the ones for the AR3 that I find these days the cases are misshapen and warped because particle board does not hold its shape over the years especially if it's in a moist environment now one of the things that I'm doing here today is working on the IF transformers uh, here's the one here that I have taken apart and these IF transformers have capacitors inside and the capacitors are nothing but a thin film of mica with a silver plating on each side and they're held captive under little spring clips on each side well these get tarnished you can see how dark that is that's tarnished and here's the capacitor from the other side now these were in one piece uh, when they were in the uh, in the IF transformer. They were in one piece like that. I got in there with my little my little wire cutters like these and clipped that out. Uh, the reason I did that was because it was making intermittent connection and the way you check for that if you have one of these what will happen is that all of a sudden your received signals will drop way down and you barely hear them well what's happening is this capacitor here is tarnished and that tarnish acts as an insulator and it's making poor contact and when it loses contact it goes out of tune so your IF transformer is out of tune well what you do is you come in and you grab a hold of the you grab a hold of the uh, lead on the IF transformer using insulated and I stress insulated uh, insulated long nose pliers and you just wiggle it a little bit there like that and if it's got a loose connection there on these uh, with the tarnish then the receiver will cut in and out and believe it or not it did it on both of these IF transformers so what I'm doing is I'm taking them apart and I measured this capacitor with a capacitor meter that I have, a digital capacitor meter, it was really hard to, to measure because I had to hold it, uh, leads on the top and the bottom. Well, anyhow, I measured it, and uh, the one side is 120 picofarad, the other side is 100 picofarad, and they go right in here. So I bent these little clips up that hold the original mica capacitor, and uh, I'm going to put these small capacitors. This is a small dipped silver mica and this one here is a polyethylene which is a better capacitor really. I'm going to put those two inside of this IF transformer and then I'm going to put it back together. And something that I found rather interesting and of note when I took this apart here is the punch out. You see on the side of that IF transformer it fastens into the chassis with a clip and the clip snaps into that hole. Here's the punch out from the hole that was inside the IF transformer. This little punch out has been rattling around in there since 1954. Amazing. And uh, it's been working. So it must not have made contact or maybe it did once in a while and caught the, caused the thing to go out. So I thought that was interesting that that punch out was still laying around inside that uh, IF transformer. So I have to put those caps in, put the IF transformer back in the radio and we should be in business. So this will be segment one of the uh, AR2 receiver. And this is Bob saying 73s and good day.